In 2003, at the age of 28, I found myself in my mother's house, and after about a month, I told myself, homeboy, you've got to get a job. So I picked up a job classifieds newspaper, I believe it was called The Employment Guide, and a company, which was a contractor for Bell South, the internet service provider in Florida, advertised an opening for a help desk representative. Basically, I would jump on the phone 80 to 100 times for 12 hours, three days a week, and one six hour shift and take calls from people who cannot log on to the internet. I had no technology experience whatsoever. So I picked up a printout of a website that I received when I attended New York University during a workshop held by Sri Srinivasan. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. He was the tech reporter for Channel 7. My broadcast journalism professor knew him and invited him over to hold an internet or smarter internet surfing workshop for journalists. I studied journalism and among the links in that printout to his website, I found one that read about.com to learn everything about anything. So I went ahead and learned everything that I needed to about a computer, mainly what was a nick because the person on the phone who conducted the preliminary interview asked me, do you know what a nick is? As long as you know what a nick is, you're good. I found out it was a network interface card. It's basically the card that has the socket where you connect the ethernet cable from your computer to your modem or your router to ultimately connect your computer to the internet. And I learned everything else about a computer. What's a RAM, what's ROM, what's a hard drive, monitor, keyboard, of course I knew what those things were. However, knowing all the inner workings of this computer, I took my laptop under my armpit and I went to the interview the following morning. I actually studied until like three to 4 a.m. on that particular day before the interview. I went there and they gave me a test. I took the test. I didn't know the answers to all the questions, but I looked them up on my computer while I had that next to me, got a perfect score. Was able to land the job, $9 an hour. It was perfect because taking these calls on a daily basis, it actually established the foundation for everything that I'm doing now because I'm pretty technologically savvy. I'm able to market websites online. You see me here on YouTube. I did this through the skills that I learned working with people to help them log on to the internet and of course marketing businesses online using social media platforms and search engines such as google youtube facebook dig.com at one particular point in time and reddit where you know that i generated over a million dollars promoting content and partnering with the 2012 barack obama presidential campaign so that was one realization where i found that if i educate myself on whatever it is that I want to do, I can do whatever it is that I want. I got that job. I actually left that job because I wanted to sell mixtape CDs over at my partner's barber shop, right? I helped him establish a barber shop out in Miami, Florida. It's actually called Blade, right? I actually named that barber shop. And I sold CDs on there. But eventually I said, listen, I want to go back to New York City. I went back to New York City, took another job with another ISP, internet service provider. It was called Cablevision. Now, one thing that I missed is when I was in Florida, what I would do, I would go with my wife out to the Kinko's and I would hook up my laptop to the Ethernet, internet connection at Kinko's. Kinko's is actually the form, what is now known as FedEx Office and you can go there and plug in your laptop and do office work. So I went ahead and went through my printout of Sri.net and there was one link that read how search engines work. And it was a link to a website called Search Engine Watch, authored by Danny Sullivan. Danny Sullivan is one of the reporters that gave Google all of its publicity. And I learned a number of things. And there were a bunch of ads that pointed to pages that taught you how to make $500 a day while sitting on a white sand beach in Jamaica. And I learned how to do keyword research and search engine optimization. And all of these marketing disciplines that you perform online, how you configure websites so they could stand the best chance of appearing for queries or searches of keywords that people make. So for instance, if you sell tires, how to have your website appear for searches of the keyword Michelin tires near me, if that's what you sell. So 
by learning this, when I went to New York, I started to post advertisements to companies that would pay me a commission if I sold products that they sold. Similar to what I do here on YouTube, like when I told you to go ahead and apply for, well, actually, I didn't tell you. I was just basically telling you that I, because I'm not a financial advisor. I didn't advise you. I just told you that I applied for the Paycheck Protection Program loan using Wampley, and they are a partner of mine because if you apply and receive a Paycheck Protection Program loan through Wampley, I get a cut. So I started performing this practice back in 03, 04. I got to the point where I was generating around two to three hundred dollars a week doing this. And it was amazing to me because prior to that, as I've told you before, I mean, I used to sell Kirby vacuums door to door, right? I sold stock when I wasn't supposed to in a boiler room office, sweatshop, right? In Wall Street and without any stockbroker license, no Wolf of Wall Street success story year because I never got good at it. I sold some stock and they gave me like $20 commission. I think I sold like 100 shares in the Stratosphere Las Vegas Casino. It wasn't being built at that particular moment in time. So I splashed coffee all over their keyboards and I left. Right. Going back to when I worked with Cablevision. They laid me off after some time because there was a snowstorm and you're not supposed to miss any days. So I find myself again broke as a joke. And I'm like, listen, I had taken out a CDL. I told you this in another video. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna use this CDL and I'm gonna start driving over the road. I was selling Avon, trying to do all these things to generate revenue and nothing worked. And so basically I was gonna go over the road and my wife was like, you know what? Why don't you just try apply for another job? Maybe you can get something. And I went ahead and I found that the learning annex partnered with the Trump organization to go ahead and promote one of its events that was featuring Donald Trump. He wasn't president at the time. It was like 06, if I'm not mistaken. 06 or, no, yes, it was 06. So I went ahead and I took a call, I took a job where I have to cold call people, mainly real estate brokers because it was a real estate event and Jeffrey Gittimer and George Foreman was also going to be attended. They were both speaking at this event. And so I'm cold calling people and out the blue, I'm like, you know, all these internet skills that I picked up before, perhaps I can go ahead and put them to work. So I started putting them to work and I started, I created a blog on blogspot.com and I started documenting the same thing, thing, basically the same thing that I'm doing here, talking to you about what are my experiences in working with this event, what we were going through, you know, who just got invited to speak at the event, et cetera, all the logistics regarding the event. And then I started to basically post links to this blog on other websites where other people were talking about real estate and being successful in real estate investing, et cetera. And I would post comments and then leave a link pointing back to my website. And then people started calling me as opposed to me having to call people. I even posted some ads on Craigslist pointing back to the blog. I created an email list, some of the applications that I use. End result, I was able to register 11,000 people to go ahead and see Donald Trump and the rest of this crew to go ahead and speak about real estate and being successful in doing so. Of course, I picked up some tips along the way how to blog and generate revenue. Again, while I was in the learning annex, as I just told you, I went ahead and learned, okay, how do you blog and then generate revenue off of blogging? And basically I took some of those tactics and implemented them in my blogging practice. Then the learning annex, it's actually a place where you could pick up all kinds of classes, all kinds of workshops that can enhance your professional skills. So I took classes on search engine optimization, how to market your businesses online. I took classes on how to dance salsa. I took a class on how to find a six figure job where I met my first mentor, Mr. Barry Cohen. He was the employment coordinator for the city of New York, excuse me, CUNY, for the, yeah, for City University of New York. It's the public university out in New York City. So I took his class and he gave me all these tips. He stated that, listen, one of the key reasons that people get laid off at a job is not because of their technical skills, it's because of their personalities. 
right? You have to learn how to work well with people. That's a lesson that I picked up while I was in college because I was good in college. I graduated top of my class when I attended the borough of Manhattan Community College. However, when I first started, it was a bumpy start because I went in there to my speech class mainly. I had a professor called Professor Najila. He was a Muslim guy. And I actually practice a belief system called the 5% Nation. And we used to do something, but we used to basically debate on different things that regarding knowledge of self, how you take numbers and you relate that to your life and to different parts of your brain. Like for instance, we would say the today's mathematics, today is the eighth, so it equates to build and destroy. I don't remember the exact words you have to say. And if it was two numbers, it would you would basically add both of those numbers and then you just talk about how it relates. You build and destroy, you build knowledge by destroying ignorance, right? So I was like, cool. And we always debated about these different things. And I got to be a little more articulate because of interacting with people at the 5% nation. So I was like, oh, this Muslim dude. I was like, he may welcome this, you know, if I'm combative and I'm assertive and I'm aggressive and everything. And I would debate everything he would talk about. So when I submitted my first paper, got a B plus. When I had, listen, let's have a meeting. I don't, I'm not here to get B pluses. How'd I get this A? And he'd tell me, listen, you got to simplify this. You got to simplify that. And I was like, all right, cool. So I realized, and then after that, I started getting straight A's. Got 3.9 GPA over in the Borough Manhattan Community College. I got a scholarship into NYU, had 3.7 GPA there. Made the dean's list almost every single semester. And I realized the best lesson that I could probably ever pick up from college was that regardless of how technically good you are, you have to have a good relationship with your professor, of course, with your superiors, once you are working in a professional environment over at your job or at your business, you have to give people what they want, the way they want it, when they want it. So basically he, reiter he reiterated these points, Mr. Barry Cohen, and I bought his book and I would always buy more books and give those books away. And it gave you a full template of all the words you should use when you write your resume and showed you how you should dress. Basically, if some of you seen some of my suits, Whenever you see me speaking, I typically have the same suit on. It's a uniform that I picked up from him. And you see politicians dressing in the same way, where when you, when you are first in attendance at an interview, you go the way the politicians dress, basically. Dark blue suit with a white shirt and a bright tie, right, for men. And then women should follow the same color scheme, of course, without the tie, perhaps. So you should do that. You should also have... Uh, success stories already memorized. So in the event they ask you, listen, what would you do in this type of situation? In the event you don't have an answer to that, you can just go ahead and pivot to your success story. Like this is a time when we encountered not generating revenue and I did this, that, and the third in order to get revenue up to $100,000 a month or whatever it is that you did to make money for your organization. People get hired because of how they save money, how they resolve problems, and how they make money. So that's what I took from there. A couple of weeks later, I got a job with a luxury service provider, a private jet charter. And it wasn't crazy amount of money because my example that, excuse me, the example that my uncle had said, he stated, listen, I'm a supervisor and I make $17 an hour. And that's basically as much money as a professional gets anyway. So I'm straight. So when they asked me, how much do you want to make after I told them about my success with the Trump Think Big Expo with the Learning Annex. They t they asked me how much you want to make. I said seventeen dollars an hour. Like seventeen dollars an hour. Let's sign them up right away. So they signed me up right away, right? And then later on, I found out that there was a guy sitting next to me, and he didn't have half the skills I had. This guy's making ten thousand dollars a month. So I start thinking. I'm like, damn. I gotta start going ahead and selling my own products. Getting back to selling. This is the only way that I'm going to make any revenue. Understand what I'm saying? So. Again, I started to go out and started to speak and started to get other clients and I would sell my services, link building packages, search engine optimization packages. Then I stopped working for that organization and I had a my resume still up on the major tech sites. It's like, you know, like indeed.com, monster.com. And I started sending out a few resumes every single day to try to see if I got some bites. And somebody reached out to me that found my resume on one of these job search sites, think LinkedIn, but this was back in 08. 
and they went ahead, a headhunter, basically, from an organization, I forgot the name of it, and they stated there's an $80,000 job through the Nielsen Company. Are you interested? And your skills, they line up with all their requirements. I was like, the Nielsen Company? I had heard of them because my uncle used to actually install meters, those meters that they install in select homes, so they are able to see or get a better idea of how many people watch the Super Bowl or any other event or any other televised show. So I was like, cool, let's go through with it. And at the same time, another organization called Zoni, they went reached out to me as well. Zoni was offering me about 40 grand or so. And the Nielsen company, they were offering me somewhere around, I believe it was 80 grand. So I told them, listen, the Zoni's also looking at, at me and they didn't waste any time. You know, they want to hire me. The lady with whom I worked over at Nielsen, she's like, all right, cool. I'll hire you right away. She hired me right before the holidays and I started working with them. So when I was working with them, there was some politics going on in the organization and some of the C-level executives, they wanted to cannibalize my salary and use it to pay an agency, one of the top marketing agencies on the planet to drive traffic to their magazines. And working with magazines, that was my thing. I had worked with the social media networks until that time. Basically, dig.com, reddit.com, and drove millions of unique visitors to publications across the planet, paid and unpaid. I used to do it for kicks and giggles sometimes. And I did it for my clients. And so I was like, cool. I was like, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm with it. So anyway, they wanted to use my salary. And my supervisor told me, she sat me aside. She took me to the diner one day and listen, they're trying to fire you. They're trying to take you out after a few months of me doing all this technical search engine optimization stuff that you have to perform. You've got to like see where the broken links are and basically cross your T's and dot your I's when it comes down to building a website to ensure you stand the best chance to appearing for searches of targeted keywords on Google and other major search engines. So it's not immediate results with this type of work because you basically do this work and you have to wait for the search engines to recognize all the changes, recognize all the links pointing back to your website, and then they start to award you with more exposure, with more real estate on their platform, more traffic, more sales, etc. So, he wasn't making money right away, so they're looking at me like, wow, what does this guy do, really? I mean, you know, he's been giving us all these technical reports, but it's actually, it is, is it going to actually result in any revenue every time that they invest in something so if they were paying me eighty thousand dollars they had to make eight times that much eight hundred thousand dollars so i was like cool so everyone was looking at me they finally after that they were looking for ways to either break up the company and to shake things up so we were the only minority group there and it was me my supervisor was a black lady my my uh, my other co-worker she was an indian lady and that was the only team that got broken up. We got broken up. They demoted, I don't think pay-wise, but they demoted my supervisor from being a supervisor to working for somebody else. And she told me there was some racism involved. I was like, really? I was like, I didn't really think that any of that stuff existed. They had me working under two people, actually. And then these two people were like, all right, we're going to set up some structure where you have to start to produce a report on a weekly basis. So cool. I mean, I'm stressed at this particular moment in time because, man, I got this nice job and now they want to take it away from me. So you know what? And they wanted to like really get strict with, with the work that I was doing. So they wanted to basically look at everything I was doing through a microscope. So I'm kind of tight. I'm like, damn, they did this to Leslie. Like, okay, cool. So should I look for another job? I was like, I really don't want to look for another job right now. I mean, my thing is basically setting up my own business. So I'm like... Let me think of what, what I could do. I start going back to the social networks. And I notice at that particular moment in time, the biggest news, as a matter of fact. Matter of fact, that day, I remember when I came to this realization, I was driving home. Michael Jackson died, unfortunately. One of the magazines that I was marketing had death photos of Michael Jackson. So I went ahead and posted that story on that magazine on dig.com through my profile. I send it out to a couple of other, of other bloggers, a couple of other publications, and result, 80,000 people visited that website in one day. The congratulatory email thread went all the way up to the top to the chief executive officer of Nielsen Business Media. 
And they're like, wow, no one has ever single-handedly drove that much traffic. You're awesome. All talk about laying me off, about taking me off, that went out the door. They didn't even work with the marketing agency anymore because from there, just driving traffic, traffic, traffic. Millions of unique visitors to their website every week, practically. Then there was one campaign where I drove 1.7 million people, yeah, about 1.7 or so million people to one piece of content that welcomed about $90,000 in revenue in about four days time. Now, how was I able to do that? Of course, I learned all this search engine optimization stuff from way back when, but working with the so with social media networks such as dig.com, I actually read one article, one article, and I learned how to do it. I say, listen, if you post a content, a piece of content on Dig and you're not welcoming any votes, then you gotta make more friends. So bing, I started making more friends, you know, on Dig. I searched out all of the influential diggers and I made, became friends with them and not only made friends with them, but I also helped them out when they were promoting their stories because once you prom once you vote on somebody else's story, they see that you voted for their story and then they vote on your story. The you pick my nose, I pick your nose economy, which is absolutely valuable to me because I always say I'm in the business of making friends and if you're in the business of making friends, hanging out with the people with whom you want to work, you will never be poor slash broke again and that's the key thing to it learning a tactic executing on that tactic learning from your mistakes and keeping continuing to work on it until you produce the results that you want that you require for you to be successful and i've taken that once i did that i realized there's nothing that can stop me from doing whatever it is that i wanted to do that actually laid me off from nielsen i started my business i've told you this story a couple of days later, I went ahead and incorporated out in Florida with a limited liability company. I was so good at what I did that all the magazines that got sold, the reason that I got laid off was because the company that owned all of these publications, these are some iconic magazines, Adweek, Billboard, The Hollywood Reporter. They loved the work that I did for them while I worked at Nielsen so much that they all hired me back. Then Shovecom LLC was born back in January of 2010. Then AOL called me up and they offered me a position as an independent contractor. Now, I went ahead and went in with all the skills that I picked up from working with Barry Cohen. And again, I would always buy books from him and I would give those books away on how to create killer cover letters and get the job interview, get the job that you want, how to be the ideal candidate for the job that you want. And I went in there with a full proposal. Again, I already have my business. So I know that when I speak to people, I better have some plan on how I'm gonna make them money. So I went in there with a full proposal in AOL, applying as an independent contractor. And they were like, wow, they were crazy. No candidate, no job candidate goes in with a full proposal, full PowerPoint presentation. The dude was impressed. He didn't give me the job for which I was applying, but created a whole new job, making $130,000 or so a $2,000 check every single week, and I worked from home. Now, I was also able to work from home while I was in the Nielsen company. Why, why was I able to do that? Because I took a tactic out of the Tim Ferriss book, the four hour work week, and I took a day off, and I was like five times as productive as when I was in the office. Then I showed him I could do it two more times, then I started asking, listen, I should just work home every week, you know, at least two times a week. Then that grew to three times a week, four times a week, End result, I, had, I only had to come back into the office once a week. And why? Because I educated myself on a tactic and executed on that tactic. End result, I worked with Shovecom LLC. I worked with a publication that I took from a newborn, all right? I built this platform from scratch because it was built on a content management system by some people over in third world country and they had everything under their control and they had to pay like $300 just to post some content, which is unheard of. It's like if me, it's like if I would have to pay $300 just to post a video on YouTube, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that way. It actually happens the other way around, they pay me. So anyway, I built this platform up, drove all this traffic using social networks, limited, li excuse me, including but not limited to dig.com, reddit.com, made it a leader in the Latina mother space and it got recognized by the 2012 Barack Obama presidential campaign. We partnered with that organization. I engineered a historic chat with Michelle Obama and Latina mothers, Latina journalists, so they could voice their position 
to the Latina community nationwide. You know what the end result. They won the 2012 Barack Obama presidential campaign. I actually started posting also fact checks on their behalf. Every time that the opposing party would say any lies, I would go ahead and fact check that. And you see the end results of all of that. Then I continued to work with other organizations, other enterprise class organizations. Also worked with the Department of Defense, drove in crazy traffic, driving tra crazy traffic. And I got to the point where we hit the pandemic last year, a number of clients with which I was working, they dropped their advertising. And then I was also picking up, throughout all this time, I was picking up skills on how to enhance my presence on YouTube. So YouTube was a platform that I chose to use as the place where I would work more digitally, more remotely as opposed to having to be face-to-face -face or having to deal with clients. So I got some legacy clients now, and we've got a lot of our operations running right here through YouTube. And you see how we've been able to be successful in helping people acquire funding through the federal government and other grant programs. And I'm happy for that. It's the most rewarding thing. But again, what is the secret? First off, as I've been telling you time and time again, you've got to sell something, all right? The simplest thing you could do and probably the easiest thing you could do, you can go ahead and take your used items in your home. There are people that have a use for them if you don't have a use for them. And go ahead and sell them on eBay, then hit the garage sales. Hit all these places where they sell these things for cheap. You can make 10X on your money. Find out what sells quickly, typically on eBay. Electronics go quickly. If you got old IKEA furniture, I always buy my IKEA furniture, I always flip it for like 50% on Craigslist. So this retail arbitrage stuff, this stuff works. And there's all kinds of tactics that you can implement. A lady, she emailed me the other day. She stated that she started a bookkeeping business last year. She hasn't been able to generate any revenue. Listen, the simplest thing you could do, if you have a client serving business, go ahead and hit the small business development centers. If you hit my spreadsheet, bit.ly slash biz ss21, you could find your local SBDC, your local small business development center on the small business resources tab. You can find score and you can teach whatever it is that you provide for a business or for people, right? For businesses, mainly if you're going this small business development center route, you can say, listen, I could teach bookkeeping, how to keep your financing in order, how to pay less taxes or whatever it is your value proposition. You hold the class. And by doing that, you're able to generate business because you don't even have to pitch your organization. You simply teach people how to do it. There will be people that will take your tactics and go ahead and use those tactics. However, most of those people, they'll go ahead and promote you. They'll be like, wow, this person's tactics, I went ahead and did it, I got this result. He's awesome, right? That helps you distribute your message and then it'll eventually get to people that don't want to do it themselves and they have to come out of their pockets to go ahead and pay you for it, okay? And you, doesn't have to, you don't have to limit your distribution of what you practice, of the tactics that you know, your expertise, is simply the Small Business Development Center. You go to other organizations where the people that will buy your product are in attendance and you simply teach them. You give the content away for free. Eventually, you'll get people that will pay you for it. And the other thing is, again, like I was saying before, how key are relationships? You pick my nose, I pick your nose. Economy, make friends, not with the people with whom you grew up. Make friends with the people with whom you want to work. In my neighborhood, people used to be like, man, you can't get a good job unless you got a hookup. Yo, then just get the hookup. It's simple as that. Get the hookup. People that are in prominent positions in life, they're other people. They're just like you. You can find ways to relate to them. You just got to hang out wherever it is that they hang out, right? I put yourself in good neighborhoods as well. I mean, I lived in Howard Beach, former John Gotti neighborhood, right? But it's a nice neighborhood. And one time taking my son to preschool, I met a client with which I've worked for like seven, eight years. Been successful with them. You know, always put yourself in a position. I, I regularly network with journalists. I would regularly network with people with whom I want to work. And we eventually, after speaking, I mean, sometimes without any ulterior motives, sometimes I just want to meet people. You know, I've hit these search engine marketing conferences and I speak to people. If you go to the free education resources tab, 
on my spreadsheet. Again, at bit.ly slash biz ss21, you can find links to learn search engine optimization, internet marketing, practically anything that you want. Internet marketing was a godsend for me because it is something that organizations desperately need. There's a tremendous need for it. So you'll never be short of work. You become technologically savvy. You're able to market businesses online. You could do it on other people's behalf. You could do it for yourself. You're not limited to anything. Understand? It all has to do with you picking up the tactics that you have to learn and simply putting them to practice. That's it.